Hello, Mr. Red here. Man, it's only about a week away from Christmas, and I'm telling you, it's about, it's cold right now. It's probably about 40 degrees, 42 degrees, something like that. It's cold out here, but inside the honey hut, man, things are on fire. That's right. We got the, it, it's so close to Christmas right now, and they are like buying honey like crazy at the gift shop. Yes. But I want to make a video on how I decrystallize the honey because our honey that's been stored in the drums now since June, it's like solid. It's solid. It's, but all, all along, I've set up the honey house to be able to decrystallize our honey using a 30 gallon kettle from the monk's kitchen. It was brought over to the honey house when we built it and it was always in anticipation of this process of decrystallizing honey. So today I want to go through the, the process of which I use to take the, the honey that's in the solid crystal state, and it's kind of liquid some too, but I mean it's like blocks and you'll see, you'll, I'll show you a picture of it, blocks of honey. And we're going to break it down and to go back into that beautiful liquid form. So by the grace of God, we'll have uh, this honey all decrystallized. It should only take about maybe an hour, hour and a half at tops to do it bring it back to the state where then I'll be able to put it in the bottle but in a few hours we'll have it in the bottler and it'll be ready to bottle up and be brought over to the gift shop. Let's head inside and do a little decrystallization of honey. Oh, oh. before we go inside I want to I want to show you the latest acquisition of the honey operation here at the Abbey. See the dumpster right behind me? Well for the last week or so we've been emptying out that building right behind me. And that building is now going to become part of the Abbey Honey. We've already taken over the Peacock Hut next to the to the Honey House, the Honey House right here, and now we'll be inside of this building as well. And they're gonna use it as an education spot as well. I'll be able to do presentations in there. But I'm gonna grab the camera before we get into the Honey House, I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna show you how big a space we got inside of this new building that we got. Check this out. Yeah, it don't look like much on out on the outside. <laughs> and I will say it 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 does have a tendency to breathe a lot. We got some broken panes right there and and the boards, they're kind of airish. But beside that, this place is really perfect. Check this out. Oh man, the space in here is fantastic. I've got all the shelf over there for storage of my frames, boxes, all the soft, the woodware, the shelving here. Huh, I think I'm gonna take that desk out of here and add more shelves. Shelving is more important than, than tables, but this cabinet right here will be able to, to do a lot of work on top of the cabinet right there and storage inside of the cabinets as well. And like I said, it is airish. I mean, you can see there's lots of cracks. <laughs> this building breathes very well. So it's going to be cold. They're not going to heat it or cool it. It does have electricity in it already. But primarily, it's just going to be a storage area and a presentation area. So it's got some great light in here. Um, there's, that's about... It's really good thing, and and plus it's dry. It's very dry in here, so it's a large space. I'm I don't know for sure, but I would say it's about 45, 50 feet long, and about 25 or 30 feet wide. So lots of space. Nice. This is perfect for for us. And the really the great thing too is that it's right next door to the honey house, right there. And the kettle that I use to to melt wax in, that's going to be brought over here and it's going to place some someplace along this wall because our gas service is right on the other side of that wall. So the kettle will be brought in here so now I won't have to be rolling all over the campus melting wax. So let's get inside of the honey hut right now and I'm going to show you this process of decrystallizing our honey now. Now everyone is familiar with the idea that honey over a certain time is going to start to crystallize, but at least almost all honey does. I've got some acacia honey that's eight years old and it's still just like the day that I got it. But for the most part, your honey's going to crystallize. And realizing that fact, when I started to conceive the idea of building the, the honey hut and how we're going to go about processing honey, storing honey, 
That was one of my first considerations. How am, how am I going to process honey and store it in such a way that when the gift shop is going to need it, that I'll be able to supply it to them? So initially I came up with the idea that I have to store honey in drums because that's the easiest way to do it and at least drums you can move them around and since our space was very limited that would be a very high priority is to be able to move product around easily, shift it around so that we can have space to work. Then the problem comes to well what, what do you do with the honey when it crystallizes because it's going to crystallize. How do you deal with all that weight? A drum of honey, 55 gallon drum of honey is going, to, is going to weigh close to 700 pounds. How do you deal with that? How do you get solid honey and be able to move it, at least to be able to transfer it to get into a liquid state? How do you do that? So my solution to dealing with drums of honey that I knew I was already going to put in the honey into them was to, to find some kind of mechanism that would be able to lift, have the capacity to lift at least 700 pounds. And what I found was a mechanical lift right here, this, this machine right here. And, and there's not a lot to the machine. It's simply a, a fork, this part of it right here, that has an attachment where you put your, your drums in the front right here and then you lock them in. And then it's mounted on a framework down here that's got two wheels on the front and then a locking mechanism back here. And what the whole mechanism consists of, the ability to lift the drum, elevate it, and at the same time, or not necessarily at the same time, but also with the capacity of being able to tilt the drum to be able to empty the contents of it. So there's there were a few options, but actually there are only two options. You could either get the machine with hydraulics, which is what I did, or you could manually pump hydraulic with a, a lever on the foot right here to lift the fork, or, and also there was a wheel to tilt it. I figured that I was already old anyway, and I'm not, I'm not getting any younger. I wanted to do the, the easy part and use hydraulics. So this machine, comes with the attachment of hydraulics. And it's simply, it's, it's, it works off of a battery, the hydraulics work off of a battery, and you have your, your fluid right here, and the pump is all right here, and your levers are right here. And so, if you want to lift your fork, you press the button, and then, you have to do it right. Press the button, and then lift up. So the button starts activating the, the pump, which will then push the fluid through there to elevate your drum. Then also, it has a capacity of tilting. So with that capacity, then we're able to dump out our honey into our cap. So now I will say the hydraulic addition is I think it was almost two thousand dollars to get this part of it but the lift itself a manual lift is very reasonable price I think it was about two thousand twenty five hundred but if you add on this you're gonna tack on another two thousand but to me it was worth putting the hydraulics on it uh, it just makes the job so much simpler and, and doesn't wear you down as long and it, and it does come with a, uh, a battery charger with it so you just simply unhook the attachment right here, plug your battery charger into it that comes with it, and it'll charge the battery. It's a, it's a really great system. Not inexpensive, but, but well worth it. And, and for what I was wanting to do, what I was wanting to accomplish here in the Honey Hut, this machine fit the bill perfectly. Now, this is a 55-gallon drum, but I also run 30-gallon drums as well. So there's an attachment right here, this insert right here, fits inside of the ring right here that will then enable you to put in a 30 gallon drum as well as a 55 gallon drum. So that, that option is available with, with you also. So that's basically the, the machine itself, but the other part of the equation is the kettle. Now you've seen me render wax in, in a kettle a dozen times probably already. We had, when, when we had the flood, 
back in 2016, uh, the kettles were in the kitchen. They were being used by the monks in the kitchen. And after the flood, when they changed all that stuff out, uh, Abby Honey appropriated the kettles uh, to use in the, in the operation here. So what I wanted to show you, well, let me, in fact, let me show you the, the kettle itself. Let me show you what we got going on with that. So here's our 30-gallon kettle that, that I'm going to be using now to decrystallize our honey. And what's important, I mean, really, it's, it's critical in decrystallizing the honey, is that we never use direct heat. That's, that's really important, that, that you don't have a direct heat source on the honey to raise the temperature, because doing that will caramelize, it'll change everything in the, in the honey. So we use indirect heat. In other words, this is a jacketed kettle. There is a lining on the outside, this, this one, and then on the inside there's a, a wall as well. And in between those two walls, there's water in between this. And what happens is you have a burner underneath here. You saw that one right at the very beginning of the video. The burner ignites and then it starts heating the water inside of the kettle. And then that temperature of the water starts elevating and then brings the entire surface area of the kettle to that temperature, whatever the water is. So you have a thermostat right here that, that regulates that temperature. And I found that for me, number eight, that setting on eight is what works. That'll keep it right, right at around 100 degrees and it won't, it won't get any hotter than that. So it's, it's a very simple deal. I mean, you've seen, you've seen the kettle in use, rendering wax. Well, it's no different here. We simply are going to transfer the honey from our drum, the crystallized honey from our drum into our kettle. Now, one thing that is really important that the inner wall of the kettle is that temperature of whatever it is, right at 100 degrees. And so it's very important that we don't want that honey to just stay on that outside wall. So it's important that I stir the honey pretty consistently and regularly to transfer that heat from that outside into the inside and the inside coldness to the outside. So we want to move the honey around so that that temperature is going to be distributed very evenly. So it's not like you can turn the fire on and walk away. You have to be here the entire time. And it's not, it doesn't take long. I think when I did it the other last week, it took maybe, maybe 25 minutes to break down uh, 15 gallons of it. So it's not a long time, but you do have to do that. It's the only thing. And then I'm going to show you, as, as we're doing this, I'll show you some of the other interesting things that happen as, as you're heating up the honey. So I think with all that, you know, showing you what the lift does, the principles of the kettle. I think we're going to go ahead and start dumping a load of honey.
Yeah, <laughs> I realize it could have gone a lot faster if I would have used a scraper to pull that honey out. But you got to admit, that certainly was satisfying seeing all that honey just come out of that drum, huh? Well, it's almost time for mass, which is good because it'll give me a, a, not a lot of time, about an hour and a half, for this drum to completely empty out. So right after mass and lunch, we'll pick this up again, getting this honey a little bit decrystallized. Our honey's all loaded up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the burners, start this thing up, and I'm gonna start stirring up the, the honey, I mean, right away. So now that our kettle is lit, and it's already starting to heat up, temperature's a lot hotter at this down at the bottom and up at the top, but I'm gonna go ahead and start stirring all this crystallized honey. And as you can see, it is pretty solid in here. And I'm gonna start stirring this thing up, getting this honey from the outside of the edge of it that's touching, touching the walls of the kettle and move that to the inside so we can take that heated honey and bring it to the inside and have the cool honey move out to the outside and I don't know if the camera can show it but you can see it's already starting to heat up and thin out on this on these edges even just starting that quick All right, it's only been 10 minutes since I first turned on the, the heater. And you can see already how the consistency of the honey has started to change. Now, what you will also notice is this foam right here that's starting to form. And interesting enough about that foam, I. I really didn't know what, what it really was. So I asked this really wise guru bee man, the 628 dirt rooster about it. And he told me what it was. He said that it was hydrogen peroxide. It's, that's what honey will form, hydrogen peroxide under certain conditions. Any free water that's in the honey will then be, it can convert into hydrogen peroxide, which is one of the reasons why honey has that medicinal value of, of healing and, and keeping wounds clean is because of the hydrogen peroxide in it. And, you know, being that the dirt rooster told me that, I immediately did not believe him. So I went and I looked it up on Google myself and I hate to say it, but the guy was right. So I did look it up and, you know, to the best of my memory, it said that all honey has glucose and what the bees, when they are taking the nectar from the flowers or whatever the source it is, that they add an enzyme to that nectar, which then converts it into honey. And that enzyme, I think it's called glucose oxybase, I believe is what it's called. And that enzyme is then what gives the honey the ability to produce hydrogen peroxide. And now you can see the foam really starting to, to create, to be made right in here. And like I said, it's, it's made from free water. So in other words, the, the water level in the honey was higher than it should have been, more than 17%, I guess. And so it starts to form. And when I did this for the first time, I probably had oh, at least a two inch layer of foam on it. And I had seen that happen before over the years. And I thought, so man, that, I don't wanna do anything with that. That looks bad and I don't think I'll use it. So I would, I would just scoop it off and feed it to the bees. Well, this time I decided to to eat it, and man, that, that stuff is excellent. It's it if you let it sit for a day or so, it turns into like a marshmallow, and it becomes like a spread. So I've been the, the last batch I did with this, I scooped all this stuff up, put it in cups, and gave it to people, and they're putting it in their coffees and teas, and it floats real nice. I should have should have gotten a picture from somebody of that, but. 
by the time I'm finished getting all this honey decrystallized, there's going to be a serious layer of foam or hydrogen peroxide on the top of this. It's been 25 minutes since we first turned the heat on. And as you can see, there is significantly more foam on the top. But what, what's more significant is look at the condition of the clarity of the honey as far as the crystals on, on the stick. Yeah, there's still a lot of crystals on there. But maybe five more minutes is all that's going to be required because the bottler will then be able to handle any of the other crystals that are in there. Right at 40 minutes. 40 minutes where we are. And I mean, I can stick my finger in here. It's, it's hot, it's warm, but it's not scalding. So I know, I know we're not over 110 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, like I said before, at this point, my bottler is going to be able to finish any of the crystals that are still in it. The bottler will be able to break those down. So, I just turned the heat off, turned the burner off, and now I'm going to move my bottler over here. But the problem is that my bottler will not being that it's on that dolly, it will not go underneath the gate. It's, the, it's set up too high. So what I have to do is I have to transfer the honey from the kettle into a bucket, and then I dump the honey that's in the bucket into the bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and start that process right now. But look how nice this is. That's beautiful. And again, you have to constantly move this stuff. I do not want any of this honey to overheat. Like I showed you my finger in there, I was checking the temperature on it. And if you get this stuff too hot, you're gonna start killing the active stuff that's in it, as well as it'll change the color of this stuff as well. It's, it's a caramel color looking right now because there's so much foam mixed up in it, but as it settles out and that foam comes up to the top, it'll all turn beautiful golden. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and push the bottler over here and start moving this stuff out of here. There it is. There's all that hydrogen peroxide stuff. And there's probably a quarter inch, three sixteenths of an inch layer of that stuff. Very tasty. So now what I have to do is this honey that I, I bottled up two days ago, I've now got to put my labels on it and bring over to the gift shop. Um, they like, I brought six cases over there three days ago and it's already sold. So this is 10 more and then I'll be able to bring probably another 12 more cases of honey from what I just filled up in the bottler in about another three days. So right before Christmas, the day, uh, day before Christmas Eve, I should have another, I don't know, 13 cases over there. But look how pretty this honey is. By constantly stirring 
that honey in that crystallized state and moving it, it does not change the color or the contents of that honey at all. That is simply beautiful. I really got to get busy. I got five more cases of this stuff to label and then bring 10 cases over to the gift shop. So that's all I got for you in this one. So thanks for watching. Oh, before I sign off though, uh, I want to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I know I'll post this video next week, which is Christmas have already passed and New Year's almost coming. So I'll say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, New Year to everybody. And, and I'd really like to extend my, my gratitude and appreciation to all who subbed to the channel over the years and, and the new subscribers that are continuing to subscribe to the channel. It really, it really warms my heart to know that there are people out there interested in, in the bees and following along and trying to, to learn more about, about them for themselves. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching and I'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Red. I'm out of here until next week. It's warmed up a lot since this morning. This morning, we, shoot, this morning we were at about 28 degrees. And when I started shooting this video, we were about 40 degrees. Now we're about 60 degrees. And as you can see, 60 degrees, and these bees, they're feeding. Now, what's interesting, I find interesting, is that I've got the honey out here, and there's more interest in the pollen than in the honey. I mean, there's some interest in the honey, but you can tell just from the activity around the feeder, these bees want this pollen. What a sight. Huh?